like a roller coaster. It is, in a way, more like a Ferris wheel. It's the view. The world looks very beautiful from above, at least for, for a while. The rush happens only as you jump out of the airplane for the first few seconds. Just another experience. Peaceful and beautiful and visual. Another dimension. It's loads of fun. You know, it seems that people these days are looking for more and more extreme ways of getting their kicks. For some, falling out of a plane at 12,000 feet could be a terrifying nightmare. For others, just a pleasant way of spending a Sunday afternoon. If you do make a jump, watch out. After the initial buzz, you could get hooked. Ancient bits. And you too could become one of the addicts who meet up when the Skydive World Championships come around. They talk free fall, canopies and boogie, and check out who are the most radical divers in the Spanish sky. So who do you not work with? We would like to say that we are having a truly fantastic time. High five. British team member Pete Allen has made more than four and a half thousand jumps. It's 90% of the jump is the adrenaline and the fear and overcoming that and learning how to, how to do it well. But then it changes into, I want to do it well, I want to do it really well. I want to make this move very precise. I want to be in that point of the sky. When my parachute opens, I want to have fun with it. I want to land, not just softly, but in an exciting manner, so it looks good to the rest of the crowd as well. Yeah, looking good is all important. But it's not easy traveling at 120 miles an hour. And getting this lick takes practice. You can either progress with the relative work side, which is from the World Championships, where you have a team of four or eight people and you go out and perform as many maneuvers as possible and you can learn with groups of two, three, four and upwards up to 144, which is the current world record of people together. When the parachute's open, the free fall part's over, we sometimes get together just to link up, have a chat about the skydive before we land. And you can do all sorts of things with the canopies. You don't just have to open them and land. The parachutes we're using nowadays are very maneuverable. As I was saying, the accuracy. Accuracy, where you've got a little pad a little pad about so big with a disc in the center and the aim is to come down and strike the pad with your heel. Expensive. It's certainly cheaper than, say, uh, taking, getting a big boat, learning how to water ski. High five. It's safe, relatively safe. The uh, chance of dying on an individual skydive is one in 60,000. In the United States, the chance that I will die driving this year is one in 5,000. So it is as safe as you make it. When people get killed skydiving, it's like running a car into a brick wall. The parachutes are very reliable. Uh, people aren't so reliable. There is a certain amount of danger involved, but you lessen the risk by going through good training, getting good equipment, knowing what you're doing. You just grab this little pad here. A skydiver's best friend is his parachute. If you look after it, it will look after you. Small parachute in my hand. And that 
Is that? Ready to go. You look at the colors, you see the Dago colors. I think what's in Austrian ski wear two years ago and ends up in windsurfers last year, the colors end up in skydiving this year. It's getting more fashionable, yeah. The parachutes are getting better and better and smaller and smaller. We can take two people under one parachute now, which was impossible 10 years ago. With tandem, you see someone can go to a drop zone and within a half an hour be up in the air, make a jump, strap to an experienced person. The same way as you'd go take a ride in an airplane. And we think that will draw a lot more people in. One minute you'll be thinking about it, the next, ready to go. It all sounds pretty easy, but um, we'll just see how it goes. I'm a little bit apprehensive because I've never jumped off anything before ever in my life. We're on the edge. Huh? Don't worry. Don't you fall out because we're going to jump anyway. We're going to jump anyway. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, well, I won't worry. How many? I look at the cameraman. Yeah. Okay, I'll give him a note that we are ready. Yeah. We're going to come down. Are you ready? Set. And go. Go. Clutch in, you're ready there. The edge is there, and you can see that you're miles up. The ground is miles away. You get to the edge, you rock once, you rock twice. Woo! You're gone. And then you just tell me you're falling, but it's the best feeling. Yeah. Boogie is no boogie without having people that want to go into boogie and have money with them. I'm just joking. It's just fun jumping, having a great time. Getting away from the sequence, getting away from the from the hardcore work of it, getting away from the competition side of it. Just coming, relaxing, having fun in the sun, good weather and all that. But it's just, just having a good time and just relaxed jumps. I mean, you have a seriousness in that as well because you're trying to achieve something in the boogie. You're trying to do a certain sequential, but you do the large formations. You do 20 ways, 30 ways, depending on the capacity of the airplane. All right. Think about the jump in the airplane. Think of what you got to do. Repeat the jump. Let's have a nice, mellow jump. I'm a boogie jumper. I'm a fun jumper. I uh, prefer to take my time off and enjoy skydiving rather than be into serious competition like these guys. Although these guys are the best in the world, I'm not, and that's not my ambition. My ambition is to enjoy skydiving for as long as I live. Ready, set, go! More like it. Competition jumping is a commitment, and boogie jumping is just fun. Anything goes. Boogie's great, really. Ow. High five. Meanwhile, the competition has been raging, and the French have been sweeping the board. The French forward team, I don't think there's anybody here that would get close to them. No, they yeah. are uh, <laughs> magnificent. Yes, they're superior. On the average, they have, what, 3,000 training jumps together? Oh, yeah. They've been together for about three, four world competitions. Yeah. We don't even, I don't even call what they do skydiving. I call that precision ballet almost. Yeah. They're, they're phenomenal. The problem is we don't have any pressure now. So <laughs> we try to do a, a good jump, but uh, it's not so easy, you know? When you, when you don't have a, to rush. Yeah. With one round still to go, they already have the four-way title in the bag. 
While the teams are doing their thing up in the sky, how on earth do the judges sort out the scoring? Well, first of all, we have to get it on film. It is a you're making it with us and, that, and so that we can review it because it is a very complex uh, event. And we do it for, by judging from ground, filming from ground to air with some very elaborate cameras over here, over here, over here, over here. And they take the formations, and the formations are done a lot like your synchronized swimming or your gymnastics. They get points for each formation that they can correctly complete. They have advanced pictures of the dice, as the judges have advanced pictures of the dice. Video to Canal Final Base, standing final. Roger, Alpha, in sight, base to final. Before, we used uh, the telemeters that you see over at the end of the balcony there, and we only got to see it one time. And the state of the art rapidly past our ability to keep up with the formations and the complexity and and what the the skydivers were capable of doing in the air became absolutely phenomenal with each jump you get less than a minute of free fall experience before it's time to open the chute so if you want to train you have to set the wheels in motion on the ground Take it along for the ride. Warning. Should I say warning? Warning. Yeah. It's good to have a video man on a dive. Uh, a, because you can review it afterwards and have a look, at, you know, and see where the mistakes were, where the good and bad points were. But it's also another very important thing in competition to have one, because uh, what it enables you to do is if for some reason you get to the ground and the judges say uh, there was a grip missed and they're not awarding you the point, um, you can go over your video, and if your video shows that, yes, you've got that point, then you can show that to the judges, and uh, providing it's there on the video, then you'll get awarded that point. High five. Don't let the apparently relaxed atmosphere fool you. The Golden Knights are the U.S. military team. They are highly trained, enormously disciplined, and incredibly motivated. Ooh. This year we've made 608 way practice jumps before the start of the competition. And uh, through the last couple of years, we've been averaging about 700 jumps a year total, both four way and eight way uh, training Michael jumps. Michael. Is this all part of the US training? Yeah. This is not uh, a sport for daredevils and stuntmen, this is a serious sport, and we are athletes. 
It's the secret stuff. We don't want the Russians to know about this. This is it, the big one. The confrontation of the superpowers. The U.S. versus the USSR in the eight-way final. It's a question of pride and honor as both teams march out to the ultimate duel in the sky. But let's not get too carried away. It's just a sport, right? of margins, the West is best. Well, for the moment at least. Thank <laughs> you.